Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about March 16th, uh, League of Legends DFS Slate. Um, for those of you who may be new to the videos, um, welcome to the show. Um, this is the video where we just go through, um, you know, each uh, League of Legends DFS slate, but also do a quick recap about uh, what happened this morning, uh, each past slate. Um, but yeah, it's an exciting video. Um, most people find the video very informative and helpful. It's, you know, it's all and it's always good to kind of talk it out you know, with one another to kind of see if other people, you know, come to your conclusion or come to different conclusions. And if so, you know, what, what is, um, what other people value, uh, in terms of analysis and in terms of, um, you know, so a player se selection when, when they make those choices between long stacks versus short stacks, et cetera. So, but let's do a quick recap. Um, this morning, um, we had a successful uh, DFS slate again. Um, I think this is the second takedown in three days. Um, so we're very lucky and blessed to have this happen. Um, yesterday, if you watch my video from yesterday, um, we faded top esports um, in this single entry GPP. This was in the 333 triumphant warrior gpp contest single entry um and i wanted to fade top esports because i wasn't sure um if top esports was gonna win and they lost ended up losing to thunder talk which i talked about yesterday uh so i just went instead with lng who was the biggest favorite um but also fit them with kwangdong freaks who's been on a tear uh in the lck so far even though they just have no playoff <laughs> hope um going into the latter part of the spring split. So it was a good slate nonetheless. Um, hopefully we continue the hot streak. Um, today we have a four game slate, um, but before we go into each slate, uh, each matchup, um, if you will please hit the like button below, um, smash that like button, it would mean a lot to us. Um, it keeps me motivated to uh, keep making these videos. So please do so, I would appreciate that. All right, so, we have four games, um, some close matchups, and then in the LCK, first of all, we have a we have two banger series. We have T1 versus D, uh, D plus Kia, and then Hanwha Life Esports versus Gen G. All four of these teams are playoff teams, so we have we have basically have like playoff previews um, in these matchups tonight. But I'll tell you why I like certain teams and um, some narratives that I have for some of these teams. But yeah, let's go into the LPL though matchups as we go those uh, through those first, as they have they tend to have higher kill upside generally. So wait, we have Team WE versus LGD. Um, this is an interesting matchup because both teams are, how do I put it, kind of shit. Um, <laughs> Team WE has been up and down. I think, you know, I think their ceiling is pretty high. Maybe not. Maybe maybe it's not their ceiling. Maybe their floor is high and their ceiling's low. And I only say that because this roster has been around for a very long time, except for maybe the jungler hung, because I know uh, Beishang used to play for Team WE. But, man, with hope coming from JDG, I mean, the core pieces are there, like with Shanks and Biu Biu. Um, I like Team WE coming into this split. Um, but, like, this season, they haven't made any substitutions. Um, like, this has been the, the same starting five for a while. And they've been up and down. They beat, they've beaten some good teams. Um, they've lost to some bad teams. I think <laughs> the range of outcomes for Team WE has been... Pretty volatile, in my opinion. And then they're going up against LGD, who has been probably one of the worst um, teams in the LPL. Um, and also, if you, if you just like look at the roster, I mean, you probably do not recognize most of these guys coming into the split, right? Like Meteor, maybe. Um, Hai Chao, maybe, um, from last year, like sub, sub subbing in for, uh, for other regular starters. So, I, I mean, roster-wise, you know, coming into the spring split, we thought that LGD would finish in the bottom. So it's not like they're expected to play better or perform better. So really, that's kind of like where they belong 
but you know ba ba basically where they belong and people thought so um but yeah anyway so team we is favored at minus 150 um total kill projection is set at 24 kills over under for the matchup by vegas and then combined kills per minute is at 0.76 where team we plays a whole lot faster than team uh lgd so uh, I think it's an interesting one because I think it reduces top WE's kill upside, but I think WE um, is in a pretty good spot tonight, and I'll tell you why here in a second. Um, but I like Team WE here tonight. Um, and you see the jungle, even though jungle control percentage, lane control percentage favor LGD um, as of patch thirteen oh four. I put that. I put this in my notes here. I think it's the last six games where they uh, Team WE played. Um, Hung, the jungler for Team WE, actually has a higher EGPM than Meteor. So I, I think that's an interesting one because I think that tells me that, you know, Hung has been playing better lately. Um, and I only looked that up because um, the EGPM for the whole split, whole spring split, has it's very close. Um, I think Meteor only had a four more uh earned gold per minute advantage there so since you know the the difference was marginal and minimal i wanted to look up how each of those junglers has been performing or has performed in the last six to eight games i believe on that latest patch so the latest patch i think 13.04 um has not really affected a lot of the players really in, in any in any significant matter um, but just different champions getting buffed and nerfed. Um, so that's, you know, has allowed Hung to play a little bit slightly better than Meteor. And I think LGD is tanking. Like, I think they've given up on the split so far already. Um, I, I just feel like Team WE is in a good spot here tonight. I have a gut feeling that they're going to win 2-0. to zero. Um, So I like Team WE. Um, I'm a little worried about the the top lane matchup, Biu Biu versus Xiao Shu. Um, Xiao Shu actually has been very good for LGD, in my opinion. I think he's been the best player for LGD. Um, but you know, this game does not <laughs> this game does not revolve around top laners, as you guys know. I value the jungler and the AD carry positions the most in the current meta. So, given all of that, I think I'm gonna go with Team WE here in this spot. And I think they're going to score pretty well too. So I, I like team WE here tonight, but as mentioned, I think LGD is definitely a live dog. Um, as you can tell, some of the metrics that I pointed out do favor LGD um, and top laner, especially Xiao Xu. And then Meteor is actually, you know, he goes toe to toe against Hung. So, and if, I mean, you know, if he plays well, I mean, LGD has a pretty good shot at winning as well. So, um, I think I'll have some, maybe a little bit of exposure to LGD, but mostly I think I'm going to have Team WE in my lineups. All right, the second matchup of the day is RNG versus Ultra Prime. I'm not a believer in either of these teams at this split so far. Um, Ultra Prime is starting Forge in the mid lane again. Um, I'm not... I, I just don't think he meshes well with the team. I mentioned that last time, or I guess the first time he started and was signed by uh, Ultra Prime. Um, even though Ching, the, the the former mid laner, was not performing well for Ultra Prime, I just don't think Forge was the answer. He and Ning did not have synergy at all. And having been signed in the middle of the season or even le in the latter part of the uh, spring split, I just don't think they have enough synergy to be able to pull this off against, especially against the experienced RNG team like this roster, uh, as you can see on the screen. And, and also Angel has been playing very well lately um, after um, replacing Tang Yuan. Um, Angel has been playing well, and then Wei actually has been playing better. Um, as mentioned, I looked at the um, latest patch metrics as well. Um, on 1304. Um, so I like Wei and Angel over Ning and Forge. And Doggo, yeah, I mean, he can maybe pop off in one game, but I just don't see him dominating like that in two games 
uh, where have he has to win two wins, uh, two games, you know, to win the series. Although Harry actually has been playing pretty well. I think he has been the lone bright spot um, that's been consistent, at least more consistent than the rest of his teammates um, going up against Breathe. And Breathe has not been playing well. So, you know, we'll see what happens there. But again, the top laners are not my priority for my analysis. Um, I do like Way Angel. And then Gala, you know, he's, I mean, he's, he's a veteran, he's experienced. I don't think he's going to let Doc go, um, you know, just, uh, you know, snowball. Uh, I, I just don't think that's going to happen. So I like RNG here tonight. Um, I have RNG winning two to zero. Um, as mentioned, RNG has been playing better as of late. Um, and Ultra Prime is going in different directions with Forge starting. I just don't like that <laughs> roster. Um, so I'll, I'll have a lot of RNG probably, and I think they do deserve, uh, maybe they don't deserve it, but I agree that RNG is probably going to win the series minus 750 seems a little juiced, but you know, it is what it is. Ultra prime is not very good. Um, so yeah, my favorite, uh, prop bets, I guess here are, as mentioned, angel, uh, I like angel and way here tonight against Ning and forge. Um, so I, I like the over on whatever the kill threshold is for Angel and Way here tonight. And this this matchup also has the highest kill upside. Um, so RNG is in a really good smash spot. Um, and then Ultra Prime, that naturally makes Ultra Prime a good GPP play, just given the high kill upside uh, nature of the matchup. But I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> I don't know if I can... Click on Ultra Prime players in my roster, uh, in my lineups when I'm building lineups. Um, I think I'm gonna, just gonna have a lot of RNG here tonight. All right, in the LCK, I mentioned um, four playoff teams going against each other. Um, very interesting. I think T1 versus D plus Kia. I'll keep this short, but any any, I think this is a toss up. I think D plus Kia. Well, I guess the the um, narrative and the game scenario here is. D plus Kia needs this win more than T1. D plus Kia um, is in a spot where they can advance to uh, the number two seed, I believe. Yeah, number two seed um, going into the playoffs by winning this matchup and then um, the next matchup after that uh, against Genji, I believe. So we'll see if D plus Kia can do it. And T1, on the other hand, they're in the first place. And I'll pull this up real quick. Maybe that'll make more sense. T1 is in the first place, but, and they don't, they already advanced. They already secured their spot as the number one seed. So they don't really have to win um, here tonight. Um, and they can play or experiment with different champions and pick some bands. It can happen. Um, but I like when T1 plays with that freedom, right? Like I like T1 when he's when Faker plays a little more loosely. Um, and I like when Zeus in the top lane plays a little more loosely. I think T1 just tends to play a lot better when they're loose. So even if they're if they even if they are experimenting, I like T1 that way. Um, and I do think um T1's metrics were a little bit slightly better overall. Um, compared to D plus Kia's um, owner has been playing a little bit better as of the latest patch um, compared to Canyon. Uh, so I like T1 still here winning tonight, but DK is definitely a live dog um, here tonight. I, I, I do think this LCK matchup will produce more kills um, compared to HLE versus Gen G matchup, given that T1 is probably going to fool, fool around a little bit more than usual. And I think that's going to produce and uh, add a lot more kills than they would have without that kind of freedom. So, yeah. So I like T1 here tonight, um, but I think D plus Kia is definitely in play as a live dog here tonight. Um, and then, yeah, Gen G versus HLE, as you guys see here, um, Gen G third spot. HLE is kind of like there. I think they're still going to, obviously they're still going to make the playoffs, um, but they're going for that number five seed, even though that don't really matter in my opinion, as long as 
you know, five or six doesn't really matter because they'll be playing against either Gen G or KT or D plus Kia, who all of three game teams are pretty good. And so I, I don't know. I mean, I think it depends if Hanwha Life is going for that maybe four spot with hoping that KT loses and Sandbox loses and all that, which could happen, but I just don't see that happening. And Gen G has been playing very well. Peanut has been lights out, in my opinion. And then their bottom lane has improved so much, so much over the course of the spring split with Pays and Delight um, having played really well. And I do think they will do well against Viper in the bottom lane. Um, now, Zika versus Chovy is an interesting one. Before I looked at the metrics, I would think Zika actually had pretty good metrics, you would think, right? But actually, Chovy's metrics were superior to uh, Zika's. Zika has not had... I think he has had an underperforming uh, season or split so far. I think he started off pretty hot coming off of that big championship win in the Worlds with DRX. Now, you know, signing with uh, HLE, they've struggled. And really the biggest problem for HLE, as you guys probably know from watching my videos with HLE on the slate, um, is Kled. Kled is the jungler for HLE. And in my opinion, he is one of the bottom tier junglers in the LCK. I think he's just going to get owned by Peanut. Um, I think Peanut is going to be motivated to win this matchup, given the playoff implications here tonight. Um, they have to win this and then hoping that D plus Kia loses T1 to T1. And then, yeah, I mean, that. Uh, uh, and I think the fact that T1 and D, D plus Kia is the first matchup, um, you know, I think either way, I think Genji will be motivated to play well tonight. Um, after watching T1 and D plus Kia um, play against each other, um, because Genji really needs to win this um, to kind of move up on the playoff seating purposes, um, depending on other teams' outcomes. But I like Genji here tonight. I don't think I'm going to have any HLE exposure. Um, HLE also has a very low CKPM, so even if they win, I think they're just not going to score well from the fantasy standpoint. Um, so I like Genji probably in this matchup and Genji only. So maybe HLE in the team slot if you think or if you need the salary to be able to, you know, work other expensive players uh, in the in your lineups, but. I like Genji here tonight. I think that's probably going to be the only team in this matchup that I'll have exposure to. All right. I think that's all I got for you guys today. Um, if you guys have any other questions, please reach out to DFS Chan at DFS Chan. Um, again, if you like my video um, or find my videos informative and helpful, uh, please, please hit the like button below. Otherwise, good luck out there. And hopefully, yeah, we share some winning screenshots tomorrow morning. Have a good one. Bye-bye.